Traditionally, we often think of math as facts that students need to memorize. 2 plus 2 is always 4. But for our dyslexic learners, route memorization is not a strength. Their strengths can be found in verbal comprehension and understanding the big picture and concepts. So when we think about how we're going to design our math lesson, the traditional approach of memorization and drill and kill is not going to be ideal for them. Instead, we need to take concepts and break them down so they can find meaning and understanding in them, and we need to give them time. We cannot expect them to move from step one to step two to step three effortlessly. They need the time to think, to work, and to problem solve. We're going to trace it. We're going to say it. We're going to write it just like you would do with your learned words. Multi-sensory instruction allows our students to learn by using their visual, auditory, and kinesthetic pathways. It helps with retention, long-term retrieval, deeper understanding of concepts, and application. Seven, seven, seven groups, groups of, of five, five is the same as 35. How could we do division? You could do 35 divided by 7 equals 5, or you could do 35 divided by 5 equals 7. I love it. And did you guys see how she was writing it and saying it at the same time? That's so, so good for your brain. We want our students okay. to make connections among different math concepts that are traditionally separated. For example, there may be a one chapter on addition, one chapter on subtraction, and then another chapter on money. So let's make 25 cents. Sometimes when we build an amount, we might use pennies so that students can use the context of money. For example, if they have five pennies, they'll set it up so it looks like the five on the die and that way they can look at it and know that it's five without counting by ones. What could this one finger represent? Five. five. Let's do it. Let's count by fives. Five. We want them ten, to see the connections 15, among math topics 20. and see how when you can add and you can skip count, it's going to help you count money. It's going to help you tell time. A traditional curriculum may also do a section on fractions and then do a section on decimals. We want our students to see the connection and not keep them separate, but know that one half is the same as 0.5. I actually had a student say to me, you mean I've been using decimals all my life? Yes, you have. But he needed to see that connection in order to make sense of it. If we can use context, it provides meaning for our students and it helps them make sense and relate to the math. We had a first grade student actually working with her teacher and the teacher asked her, what is three more than five? And she did not know. And the teacher said, if five students are on the bus and three more get on, and the little girl said eight students are on the bus. And it was in the blink of an eye, that one element of context was all she needed. So we're gonna talk a little bit about mental math because so many times we see a problem and we just start working it. But if we stop and think... Our students have strong reasoning and logic skills. So when they see a math problem, we want them to stop and think and see if they can reason their way to the answer. 203 minus 198. Now we have all these tricks that we've learned, like, oh, if the number on the bottom is bigger, then you've got to knock next door and all of those things, right? But can any of you guys solve this without doing all of those steps? Thomas, what do you think? 198 can go like 198.9, five. And how did he know he could use addition to figure that out? Fern? Uh, because 198 is so close to 203, so you, you only had to count up. Beautiful. Five. 